We have been talking about uh, the Hawaiian Road Commission, the AHA Hawaii or EV, the events that have taken place earlier. We do have a caller online and uh, we'll continue with our discussion. This is KWAI and if you would like to call, the telephone number here is 524-1080. Aloha caller, welcome back to the program. Hello. Um, by the way, I could hear you very nicely during the song and during your um, Discuss your mention of Emma Veery after the song. Yes. But now I can barely hear you, which oh. is exactly how it was while we were talking before, I I, where I can barely hear you. Okay, is it any better now? No. Okay. Um, but I am saying it was considerably better in your comments after, the, hmm. and when you mentioned Emma Veery right yeah. after the song. Is it any better now? Mm, testing maybe test. slightly okay all right it was a very definite difference though Change. when you stopped talking about Emma Veri, hmm. which was through my through my uh, telephone yeah and also then when you switched over to talking not about Emma Veri. <laughs> So if you moved any lever or something, that's what did the bad thing. Well, I, I would have to put you on hold, and I think that was a change. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold just for a minute and ask if uh, you're hearing this any better now. And now I'm going to put you back on the air. And how was it? It was great while I was on hold. <laughs> okay, it must be with the telephone uh, set here. And uh, in the meantime, I'll, I'll keep trying to play with uh, different things. And if, <laughs> if it changes uh, while you're talking, you just let me know. Well, let, let me, I have two, two things now. Um, mm -hmm. One of them is, um, the, uh, you were saying that the Act 195 mm -hmm. uh, process places uh, Hawaiians specifically under the control of the state of Hawaii. And yet it's, that's the same complaint that's made about the Akaka Bill. And in particular, the Akaka Bill, by creating an Indian tribe mm -hmm. for Native Hawaiians, mm -hmm. places them under the plenary power of Congress and so on, just like all the other tribes. And mm -hmm. then uh, you take the land and put it into the ownership of the federal government in trust for the tribe and so on. So I just don't see that that's any different than what is mm. being done through Act 195. Okay. Well, if you compare Act 195 and the Akaka Bill, with regards to the Akaka Bill, it's a federal expression of how they want to treat the Native Hawaiian people. The Native Hawaiians can either register or not register with the Akaka Bill, and they also had the right under our regime to choose independent instead. With Act 195, there is no talk about independence, and it is, in essence, an interference with what had been set up and what had been promised to the Hawaiian people, that the delegates who had been elected by the Hawaiian people, as opposed to Act 195, appointed by the governor, the delegates elected by the Hawaiian people could develop their proposal turning it back to the Hawaiian people, and the Hawaiian people would, at that time, vote on what direction they wanted to go. In this particular case, Act 195, there is no such referendum being placed to the Hawaiian people. All they're doing is creating a role, and however many sign up, that is the role, and, that, and then they're going to submit it to the federal government as if it's a nice, neat package being presented by the state of Hawaii. And that is not the expression of self-determination. That is not Pono. Oh, you don't believe that the role of members being developed through this um, uh, Kanai Olovalu process, that you don't believe that this role of members will then um, meet in some sort of convention or hold an election to elect officers who will write governing documents and then have another vote and so on and and that they yes, they would be able to take up the possibility of independence no not at all and it's not contained within that structure of taking up the possibility of independence well, the they're very clear of, just of a minute they're very clear they're very clear in that legislation and if you had listened to the testimonies in the uh, discussion at the legislature it was for eventual submission to the congress so that the congress could say that rather than having to create the Akaka bill 
bill out of the Congress. What we will do now is merely adopt from what the state has expressed. And what they have done, what the state is doing, is merely giving the Native Hawaiians a single expression, which is only working within uh, the sovereignty of the United States. Mm -hmm. So that's a big difference there. It, it is indeed a big difference, mm -hmm. if if that is accurate. Um, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, Where is I, I understand that the last couple of attempts, the little stealth attempt that was made last October where, you know, I was going to simply inscribe the Act 195 tribe on the list of federally recognized tribes under a single sentence, um, you know, that, if that is how you see the process ending and that, that, that the federal government would simply recognize the role of members of the Act 195 group, and that's the end of the story, and it's now under no, the No, I'm not saying, you're state. reading too much into what I'm saying. You're reading far too much. What I'm saying is that the state legislature expected that once creating this entity through Act 195, then it would be easier for the U.S. Congress to grapple with it, whether it is through an administrative process, which is your reference to something recently attempted, or through congressional process. But at least now they can point to what is happening on the ground in Hawaii and say that this is the choice of the Native Hawaiians. And that will give them an excuse to avoid the earlier call to have Native Hawaiians come up with their construct of what they wanted to propose to the Hawaiian people, which included independence as well as integration. You, you were complaining about mm -hmm. Act 195 because it does not mention the possibility of independence, but of course the same is true of the Akaka Bill, which does not mention the possibility of independence. Well, in fact, uh, but you, you're not hearing the whole picture. I'm saying that Act 195 is a Hawaii uh, instigation. The feds can do what they want through the federal eyes. When Hawaii first proposes to the native Hawaiians that will listen to your voice, will give you an opportunity to elect your delegates and let your delegates decide how to unravel this process. And after meeting and making that decision, we will support your delegates to present this proposal to the Hawaiian people. At that point, let the Hawaiian people decide if they want to go into an integrationist approach, an independence approach, or both. That is what Act 195 stopped. It's trying to kill that process and direct the Hawaiian people only into one direction. Now, I am saying that it's okay if the Hawaiian people choose eventually to go into an integrationist approach, but don't cut off their right for complete independence. If they should make that decision that they want to become integrated within the United States, then that's their expression of self-determination. I would disagree with that expression, but that's their expression. In this particular case, what the legislature did was stop that expression, expression from being expressed. They limited it only to one choice, which is not a practice of self-determination. It is a direction. It is a mandate that this is your only option. Opportunity. And this is what Act 195 is. Um, earlier, we were discussing exactly what Act 195 says. Mm -hmm. And during the break, I took the opportunity to bring it onto my computer screen. Mm -hmm. I'm now going to read a paragraph from... This is, this is the final act that was signed by the governor. It's, mm -hmm. it's uh, SB1520SD2HD3CD1. Okay. So it, it is the bill that the governor signed. Mm -hmm. And um, on page four of the PDF version, which, is, which has all the line numbers in it is what mm -hmm. I'm looking at, mm -hmm. it, um, there's a paragraph which says, which talks about the United States became a charter member of the United Nations and so on and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Um, also, 
So in December 2010, the United States endorsed the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which acknowledged, among other things, mm -hmm. Article 3, Indigenous Peoples have the right to self-determination. By virtue of that right, they freely determine their political status mm -hmm. and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it goes on in the next paragraph to say, the United States endorsement of the United Nations Declaration included recognition of its support not only for the Native Hawaiian Government Reorganization Act of 2010, but also many additional laws for Native Hawaiians, and then, then they go on and list those. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the language that sort of is, explicitly endorses the Declaration of the United Nations. The well, I think they mentioned the Declaration and the fact that the United States has endorsed it within American domestic laws, and that's why they're citing uh, those specific uh, domestic American federal laws to fit within the UN Declaration. The UN Declaration is much broader than just the limitation of domestic laws. Mm -hmm. The right to self-determination is not to be confined by, as expressed by the colonial governments domestic laws that now govern those people and that's but that's how the US would like to uh, limit the, its definition and the state legislature's recitation of that provision is in essence a limitation of, of that uh, of course the, the United declaration. Nations declaration mm -hmm. also contains provisions protecting uh, state sovereignty against secession by indigenous peoples well, it does and it does not. Uh, if you read, I, I believe it's section 64 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, it does protect uh, the internationally established rights of all peoples. Uh, you do have another uh, international instrument which talks about uh, friendly relations among states in which those states that have adopted this declaration or this particular uh, agreement or convention is trying to say that you should not allow the dispersal or the division or the separation of existing states. So it's a self-statement of trying to protect its internal integrity. And many states have attempted to use that kind of language, which was also tried to be tossed into this declaration to prevent that uh, secessionist movements. And yet you find that when the, these matters are discussed in the international arena, they will always revert back to the, the sense of independence, of decolonization. In fact, they created uh, the Special Committee on Decolonization back in, when was that, 1960, to look at those very uh, provisions, including the situation with regards to Puerto Rico and many other places. Um. It's always dangerous to try to put words into somebody else's mouth and mm -hmm. say, mm -hmm. this is what you're saying. But I'm, I hope you will take what I'm about to say and correct it somehow and, and, and express this in your own words. What I, what I hear you saying about what's wrong with Act 195 mm -hmm. is that... The Roll Commission is going to spend a year building up a list of members. No, uh, stop right at that point. Right. I don't think it's a year. What they say is July to August the 19th. And uh, I'm sorry, it says July the 19th. They will be open until July the 19th. It doesn't say in the paper at least uh, when is their ending date. I, no, I'm sorry, it says they... And they began Friday and will remain open until July 19th. Now, it doesn't give us a year. Well, that, that's not an, an essential element of what I'm... Well, you're saying a year, so I'm not sure that it is accurate. Okay, but we, we, yeah. we can set that aside. But what I hear you saying mm -hmm. is your main complaint is that once the membership has been established, mm -hmm. or even before the membership has been established, perhaps, um, then uh, the federal government might recognize that group, the Act 195 group, 
and say, okay, we recognized you now, and then what I think you are saying you are afraid of is that the that group that has now been federally recognized will no longer be able to hold membership meetings which would allow the possibility of expressing a desire for independence. Not, not that group, that's correct. Because within that whole scheme, it says that the Secretary, I believe it's the Secretary of State, if not the Secretary of Interior, will have superiority over that group. So as a group meets and the group devises its own uh, organizational documents, the Secretary, the U.S. Secretary, either State or Interior, will have the right to oversee it. And if they feel that any statement within that organizational document contradicts U.S. policy, then it will send the document back for correction or to align itself with American policy. Right, that's in the ACACA bill. And, and it's going to be the same thing as uh, this Act 195. The Act does not give them the same rights. And if it did, why are you going through Act 195, gov uh, Governor's appointment? Why not just stay with the AHA Hawaii Oivi, mm -hmm. which had been elected by the Native Hawaiian people? Yeah. Well, okay. I, I, that was the main thing I wanted to okay. do was to discuss with you the difference between mm. your support for the Akaka Bill and your opposition to Act 195. Yeah, I think it, and it's very important that one uh, takes the time to make that distinction between the two rather than just uh, assume that they are one and the same and then draw conclusions based on that. So it's you need to be far more analytical in order to really understand what I'm uh, trying to express. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for your call. Yes, thank you. Okay, take care. Aloha. And if you would like to call, our telephone number is 524-1080. I should say that we have about four, four and a half minutes more on this program. So you might want to hold your call. We do have another hour of discussion uh, here at uh, Hawaiian Potpourri. So we'll give you some time to uh, think about these matters. These are uh, deep matters, I, I know, and uh, we don't often discuss them. Uh, but this gives us an opportunity to get into some of the intricacies of the whole subject of sovereign rights, Native Hawaiian rights, Hawaiian sovereignty and what it means. I think the guideline should be those two principles that I had spoken about earlier. Self-determination and pono. Does Act 195 really approach or exercise self-determination? Is it pono? And I suggest that it is not self-determining or pono. Self-determining includes the right to choose between integration, free association, or independence. Those rights were examined and of those three options, the Aha Hawaii Oivi, that entity in which Native Hawaiians had elected their delegates, had said, we need to present to the Native Hawaiian people at least two of these three options, one for integration and the other for independence. This Act 195, this Hawaiian Roll Commission, was not elected by the Native Hawaiians. They have no jurisdiction to speak for or try to formulate something for the Native Hawaiians. They were appointed by the governor of the state of Hawaii. Okay, so wrong already. A promise was made to the Native Hawaiians. You elect your delegates, you have the meeting convention, let them propose to the Native Hawaiians what governance form they want. And then you have an election, no, not an election, a referendum, to have them choose, do you want this or that? In this particular case, in Act 195, all of that is being cut short. They're essentially saying, no, nope, we are not going to follow this uh, more consultative process. We are going to decide for the Native Hawaiians that this is the only show on the road, in essence. And as to that, I am in complete 
this agreement. It does not afford our people the right to self-determination. Fuck. 